Welcome to Maxim Integrated's EESIM System Power online tool. In this video, we will provide an overview of the System Power tool. First, let's review how to enter the tool. From any Maxim web page, I can click the Design tab, and under Design Tools, Models, and Software, click EESIM. Clicking EESIM brings me to the EESIM landing page where I can launch the application. If I'm already logged into the Maxim website, I will immediately enter the tool. If I'm not logged in, I must log in with my email and password. Those not registered, select Register for Membership. Upon arriving in the tool, we see a block diagram showing the general flow of EESIM. Clicking System Power, opening the System Power tool, we start under the Design Requirements. Under the Device Selection, you see the default selection of a custom load such as a processor or SOC. Enter the manufacturer, family, and device. Down here, you create the target device. Power pin names and requirements. This provides maximum flexibility in your design. Here, you can preview the device. Another way to create your target device is to select from the device drop down FPGA. If you have a previous design with a power estimator file, you can upload it here. If you do not have a file, you can download the Xilinx power estimator file here. I will look at the Xilinx family Kintec 7 and I'll select a device the XC7K325T. You must ensure the manufacturer, family, and device selection of your power estimator file matches what you selected in the tool. Now I upload the power estimator file. The tool generates the target device's power pin names, voltages, and currents. It assumes a plus or minus 2.5% tolerance you can modify as necessary. The grouping of like voltages can also be done where appropriate. For instance, you can delete unused power pins and group like voltages. You can preview the device here like before or view or modify it on the schematic page. Finally, the DC input requirement of 12 volts, which it is, now you create the design. Under the View Schematic tab, you open up with your target device defined on the right and your DC input on the left. In the middle are the blocks you can play with. It starts with a single, double, and triple converter. You can also add components here. You have a processor, single, double, triple converter, input supply, and a load. You click on what you want to add. It connects to your mouse. You click again. It places it. At that point, you can drag it around. On the left here, you have everything you need to connect the different blocks. Double clicking on a component will allow you to change, configure, or even simulate it if there is a model available. So here's our target FPGA. Double clicking, I am still able to modify the target FPGA. I can do everything in the design requirements, including adding a pin. Connecting a DC to DC converter before configuring it will automatically fill in the required inputs and outputs when I double click and drill into the part. Red means there's no connection. 
it is best to click undo and start the connection again. Double clicking to define the part. You see that the input voltage and output voltages and the current have been passed into the part. I can search for parts that have the design tool available. And here's the 15046. I can design it by clicking it here. We move into the design requirements page into the DC to DC converter tool. We've got the parameters passed in. You can optimize as necessary and create the design. It's now creating a schematic with all of the components calculated. You can do what you can do in the DC DC converter tool in EE Sim. So these are the hot spots and you can analyze this circuit. And here you can configure an analysis, AC analysis, transient analysis, and steady state analysis. Set the stop time, run the analysis, view the output, the IC, the switching, or you can open up in the waveform viewer. If you want to see more detail, check the DC to DC conversion tool video. Going back to my design, you notice there's a blue design it here initially, and now it's designed. That was an example. You can edit what you've done. Double clicking the part, I can change the existing converter or reselect a triple output converter. Having selected the triple output converter, I continue my connections. You've probably noticed the design rule checker in the right hand corner. It makes sure that logical connections are made, meaning that voltages match on a given connection. Current required is less than current supplied. 80% of power in is equal to power out and the loads do not have multiple sources. Double clicking to define. Say I want an add an LDO. Daisy chaining it from the output here. Double clicking to define, selecting LDO. I'll select the max 8516. The 8516 is defined. But notice the design rule checker has found error one. If you daisy chain a load that exceeds your converter's load current capacity, you may have to reselect the converter. This design rule makes sure you have the proper converter selected by flagging you and forcing you to reselect the converter. The tool back calculates the power in, of course, assuming an 80% power efficiency for margin. Reselecting the part to see if the error clears will show that the converter is sized correctly. And it is. Continuing my connections. Note I am using only one output from the three output converter. The tool automatically uses the one connection in the drill down menu and changes the converter to a single output converter. Defining my final two converters. Finishing my design. I should have if I've not already saved it. So I will save it now. Next, I could go to the summary, but if I do need sequencing, I would go into sequencing. Now under sequencing, 
I need to add a sequencer. We had six rails. So let's say I just want something with six rails. Various interfacing and features. I want a user EE prom. Here, the Mac 6870, I'll select that part. I will, I will add the rail assignment. So I'm using sequencer one. Now I have the group assignments which I use in conjunction with the data sheets power on and power off supply sequencing, I can create a simple timing diagram as a record for what I want to do in my design. Apply changes. And here's my timing diagram. I can also view the schematic. When I want to review my design, I click on the Summary tab, where I see my system power parts, a data sheet of those parts, a product page, top-level schematic. I see the various converters, the ones that have a design tool available. I'm going to have the design requirements, a schematic of that, and a bill of materials. You'll see that here also. I will have the sequencer selection, timing diagram. I go back up to the top, moving to download designs. Here you have a page that allows you to download everything the tool provides, the BOM and Excel format, a PDF of the design summary. You also can get an offline version of EESIM. Now you have more than a pencil sketch of your design that you can share with your colleague. Thanks for watching a demo of Maxim Integrated System Power Online Tool.